Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back for week three of the National Pokeball League, the NPL. We are your Montreal Hapsalls, and we are currently 2-0. This week, we are taking on Baby Eric and the Baltimore or Oracorioles. Excuse me. I was about to say Oriolos. Uh, or Oriolos. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's a completely different team. This is the Baltimore Oracorioles, and uh, this is the Toad team. <laughs> David drafted this. Uh, he was he was initially in the league, and then he left after, uh, I believe it was week one or two. And Baby Eric... Uh, or Eric came up to uh, to replace him. So this is who we're taking on and let's go over his team. So he's got Greninja, Seismitoad, Toxicroak, Politoed, Venusaur, Empoleon, Z Kabutops, Gliscor, Z Decidui, Electros, Poliwrath, and Mega Gardevoir. So a few things about the team. Uh, obviously, I've noticed that it's a rain team or semi-rain. Uh, it has Politoed, Kabutops, and Poliwrath as sort of a rain core. Seismitoad fits into that as well. It's also Swift Swim. So he's got a few... Uh, few rain options. Uh, Greninja's a threat, for sure, to our team. Uh, definitely a very powerful uh, Mon to have to deal with, but uh, but we have answers for it. Uh, he's got uh, the Keldeo Resists that are uh, Toxicroak, Venusaur, and Decidueye. Uh, and uh, Eel is definitely coming, and uh, Gardevoir is definitely coming. That's, that's how I feel about this matchup. Um, before even jumping into it. So, uh, I built in consequence to that. So, we're gonna... Uh, start up with the team builder as usual. Obviously, the uh, battle time is uh, in the comments section, so if you guys want to skip ahead to that, please do so. Uh, and if you want to see the team builder portion, then stick around. So we have Keldeo starting us off, Calio, with Scald, Hidden Power, Psychic, Secret Sword, and Calm Mind. So I noticed that his team is very Keldeo weak. Other than the Decidueye, this set pretty much beats everything. Uh, can beat Seismitoad, can beat to Toxicroak and Venusaur very easily with Hidden Power, Psychic, and uh, can beat Empoleon, obviously, with through and Seismitoad through the use of Secret Sword. Uh, the Calm Mind uh, boosts help a lot against Gardevoir, uh, barring Psy Shock, help a lot against Greninja's uh, Extra Sensory, um, against pretty much all, almost all of his special attackers. And there was one Mon, another Mon I didn't mention that I absolutely know is coming, and that is Gliscor, because Gliscor shuts down a lot of my offense. Uh, mainly Lando and Physical Hoopa get stopped completely, so I know that he's probably going to bring that. And that's why I decided to bring Keldeo, because every time Keldeo gets a free switch in on Gliscor, he's forced out. And uh, I can either get up a Calm Mind, Skull, try to burn the Decidueye, or whatever else comes in, uh, make a prediction on something coming in and, and click hidden, and click Calm Mind, uh, Hidden Power Psychic, doesn't really matter. So I have uh, I have good responses to, uh, to Gliscor, as you'll see, uh, coming up. So, first Pokemon is Hoopa Unbound. Uh, so, obviously it's a mainly physical set. I'm bringing Choice Scarf because one of the things that I noticed in my mocks was that uh, Mega Gardevoir was a very big problem for me on lead, and whenever I'd get momentum into something, there was nothing that would immediately knock out Mega Guard, uh, barring maybe like a very high roll or like prior damage, uh, and then I, I click Bullet Punch with uh, Mega Scizor. Like that, that would be the only thing. Nothing else could really destroy Mega Gardevoir. Everything that I have that was faster than Guard wasn't knocking it out. Keldeo, Jolteon, none of those things took care of it. So um, I decided to uh, to bring Scarfed Hoopa because if ever, let's say, uh, Guard got behind a sub, I could just Hyperspace Fury through the sub. I could never protect on a Wish turn. Uh, and I felt like uh, Hoopa was a really strong Pokemon in this matchup because uh, Hyperspace Fury plus Zen Headbutt is pretty much unresisted across his entire team. He doesn't have a good response to it. His only good response is Gliscor uh, because it can physically wall Hoopa and get U-turn momentum and knock out Hoopa if it wants to. So I decided to run HP Ice and go with a mix set as well as Energy Ball, because if you look at his team, Greninja, Seismitoad, Politoed, Empoleon, Kabutops, and Poliwrath, those six don't like Energy Ball, so if it comes down to any combination of those six in the end game, I can win with Energy Ball. So uh, I figured that a mix set like this made a lot of sense. Moving on, we have Motorhead, the Lando T. Uh, I'm bringing Agua Berry. Again, this is uh, based on information from my mocks. Uh, the spread that I have right here pretty much allows me to live any hit on lead except for like an Ice Beam or any Ice type move. Uh, like Mega Guard's Hyper Voice won't knock me out. Um, Gliscor's Ice Fang isn't doing enough. Uh, I think I have, I even have enough HP and defense for no attack invested Gliscor to not to hit KO me, I believe. Uh, but anyway, the point of this set is that I was initially going to bring Swords Dance Gravity set. Uh, for his team, because once I got off the gravity and the swords dance, nothing came in. Everything was dead. It, Eel was dead. Gliscor was was getting destroyed. The problem is that takes too much setup. And if I go for gravity, 
Uh, he can bring in something like uh, a faster Mon, for example, like Greninja or Mega Guard, and destroy me. So I figured that having a uh, knockoff on the lead would be really important. Earthquake obviously hitting the, the Empoleon as a lead option, but I really thought that he might lead with Gliscor uh, or Mega Guard. Like those, those were the two that I felt had the best lead matchup against me, uh, as well as Greninja, but I think that I had solid enough responses to Greninja for it to not be a problem. Um, so I felt that knockoff was a good bring for Gliscor because he couldn't risk me swords dancing in his face if I was a Zemon, uh, as well as uh, having U-turn and Earthquake, obviously Earthquake for Empoleon, U-turn for, for getting out against Guard. What I saw a lot of was Wisp Guard in my um, in my mocks, but I figured uh, Lando's job is not to break this game. It's to gain momentum, it's to knock off items, and it's to get up rocks. This is why I'm bringing it. So if it gets burned, it gets burned. I don't care. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't matter at all. So uh, we're going to be using this to uh, to attempt to get up hazards as well as to uh, try to knock off the the Gliscor as early as possible and catch it on the switch. Because once it doesn't have its toxic orb, it's no longer a switch into Hoopa even on my physical moves. So that's that's the intention there. Next up, Ozzy Osbourne, the Go Bat, uh, first and last week coming. Unfortunately, if you guys didn't catch what I said last week, uh, this is uh, the week that we make our transactions. So I'll be going over those at the end of the video. If you want to stick around for those after the battle, I'll let you know what exactly we got. So, uh, Ozzy this week, fully stood F, Eviolite. I felt like I needed a, a good check to some of his rain options, like uh, Polyrath, Greninja, Seismitoad, those guys specifically, and, and even Politoed itself. Um, and I felt like having a, uh, a Max Spadef Super Fang uh, Golbat was, was a good enough option for wearing them down. Uh, Roost, U-Turn, Defog, pretty basic. Uh, I'm only bringing Defog because I want to give um, things like Hoopa and the, the next two mons as many switch-ins as possible. So uh, I felt like having Defog on here was, was better than rocking, for example, Brave Bird, because I figured he would never stay in with like his Decidueye on my Golbat. So uh, we're also uh, inner focus. Why was that again? Uh, was there a reason that I didn't want to be Infiltrator? Yes, that's right. Um, I didn't care for hitting the um, the Gardevoir behind its sub because I could always bring in Hoopa and just go for the Hyperspace Fury after. And I figured uh, what I want to avoid the most probably is going to be Greninja's extra sensory, extra sensory flinches. Uh, they're only 10%, but if they happen, I lose my Golbat, and that's really, really bad. So uh, I tried to avoid that altogether and, uh, and just make sure that I couldn't get flinched. So inner focus over Infiltrator in this case was 100% uh, the, the play for me. So moving on, we have Metallica, the Mega Scizor. Uh, we are rocking a, an Adamant set with no attack investment though. Uh, we're, ma we're almost max HP of uh, some spit F. This, this is to live HP fire from Mod Modest Guard uh, from full without rocks up. Uh, we're 176 speed. This is enough for a uh, max speed. I think it's, hold on, Empoleon, I want to say, uh, or Polyrath. It's one of the two. Max speed, but not jolly or timid. Um, the other nature, any, any, any other nature, essentially non-speed boosting nature is what I'm trying to get at here. Um, so I, I'm able to outspeed those, get off uh, U-turns. And we're rocking Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, Roost. So th this is a really good sweeping set against him late game. Obviously, he has a ton of water types. This, this is undeniable. But the thing is, the rest of my team, I think, takes a good enough advantage of his waters to open up the door to Scizor if it comes down to it. So uh, that's that's what I'm going for with this set. Of course, I'm rocking U-turn over bug, bug Bite because in the mid game, I feel like getting U-turns off with Sizz is going to be more important than setting up with it. And uh, obviously, we have Roost on there because we do have a good amount of bulk and we'll be able to take on some of his, uh, his special threats and his physical threats too. So... Moving on to the last one on the team, we have ACDC, the Jolteon, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Volt Switch, and Baton Pass. I really uh, debated whether to put on Hidden Power Ice or Hidden Power Grass on this set. Obviously, he has a Seismitoad and a, a, a Gliscor. So, uh, I figured that the Gliscor was a bigger issue and I wanted to knock it out earlier rather than later. If I couldn't get a knockoff with, with Lando on its Toxic Orb, I wanted Jolteon to be able to hidden power ice into it and just get rid of it. Um, whereas Seismitoad, I didn't care about as much because as you guys can see, I'm Flame Orb Quick Feet. I'll outspeed uh, Seismitoad, I outspeed Kabutops as well in the rain. Max Jolly Kabutops is outsped with this set. I'm outspeeding Scarf Gren with this set. 
Uh, so I can outspeed the, the Seismitoad and just get off a Baton Pass into either my Keldeo, my, my Golbat, whatever I want to. So uh, that's, that's the idea here was that I didn't feel like I needed Hidden Power Grass as much as I needed Hidden Power Ice. And I felt like Gliscor was a much more likely bring against me than Seismitoad. So that's the full team. Not too much more to say about it. Uh, I'm going to let you guys see how the, uh, the battle played out. So let's get right into it. As you can see, Eric brought a Greninja, Venusaur, Mega Guard, Gliscor, uh, Polyrath, and Decidueye. I was kind of surprised not to see Kabutops because that thing did a lot of work to my team. However, without rain, uh, it's a lot less overwhelming, so it makes a lot of sense as to why he wouldn't bring it. So, a uh, thing I noticed right away is that he brought a team very similar to ones that I'd seen in Mox. The only thing that I was surprised to see was Polyrath, but after the game, I realized that it made a lot of sense because Polyrath is an excellent Scizor check, and it's probably the best one he has on his team. So uh, it made perfect sense. It's one of my main offensive options in Scizor, and he was very weak to it, especially with the team that he brought. As you can see, he only has one water other than his Polyrath on this team. Didn't bring in Polion, didn't bring Seismitoad, uh, none of that, no Politoed. So he bought, brought the Polyrath instead, and it's a, it's a great, great check to, uh, to Scizor, for sure. So uh, I see the Decidueye as well, and I'm figuring, okay, well, he brought, like, sort of a, a double resistance core to my uh, to my Keldeo in Venusaur and Decidueye, so he has multiple switch options uh, among his mons. I'm going to go for my Lando lead. As I mentioned in the team builder, I feel like la leading Lando is very, very strong here, and he leads off with Gliscor, so I'm thinking, if he lets me get off this knockoff right here, I'm in prime position to just go ham with Hoopa. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for knockoff as he goes for stealth rocks as opposed to clicking protect or toxic or anything of that nature. I was fearing protect. Uh, I was very scared of that that possibility, but I knew if he was protect toxic that he wouldn't be able to deal with my uh, my scissor nor my gold bat. So uh, I thought it was a lot more likely for this to be the rocker. On top of that, it's the only rocker on his team. So I'm going to get the knockoff off. His Gliscor does actually have toxic as I'm able to get up stealth rocks. And now it's only got two more moves. I'm assuming roost. And the last move is either earthquake or Ice Fang. Ice Fang makes sense for my Lando. Earthquake makes sense for the rest of my team, obviously. So I'm going to go for, uh, I believe, the U-turn here as he actually does reveal the uh, the Ice Fang. What's cool is that I have the Agua Berry. Whoa, my, my, my mic was getting away from me there. Uh, I was <laughs> starting to rotate backwards. Uh, what's really cool is that I have the Agua Berry here and uh, it'll eventually go off. Uh, once I get low enough, so I'll be able to, to heal off a lot of health here. And scouting for that Ice Fang is going to be really nice, obviously, as now I'm going to get in my Keldeo. He's only got Toxic as an option to hit me, and if he lets me get up a Calm Mind, it's looking really dreadful for the rest of his team. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm just going to go for a Scald, and I want to see what kind of damage I get off. I expected the Decidueye to come in, and most mocks, that's what came in as opposed to Venusaur. And I'm going to go for a Scald, I'm going to try to burn. And the Venusaur only takes 17, but that's actually pretty good damage. Um, I don't calc that right away. Instead, I'm just going to go into Golbat. I know that Golbat walls this thing as he actually goes for a Leech Seed. So now my Golbat is sitting at uh, 63. So obvious play is to either click Brave Bird or Roost here, something of that nature. I don't have Brave Bird, obviously. But uh, in Eric's mind, uh, my best play is to try to heal up and not have my Golbat be solo because it looks like a very good defensive option against this team. So instead, I'm actually going to go for the U-turn here as he goes into Gardevoir. And what that means is that the threat is now in <laughs> as we get in our Hoopa. Uh, Scarfed Hoopa, Gardevoir doesn't live from 65, Hyperspace Fury always knocks it out, so that's exactly what I'm gonna go for. His Gliscor comes in without a Toxic Orb, it wasn't able to heal up enough damage earlier in the in the game at the very beginning, so it's now sitting at 5% with no healing, and I'm able to go for another Hyperspace Fury here and knock it out. It'll die to rocks anyway, and his only form of defog is the Decidueye. If it's a Defogger, that means that it's not Scarfed, it doesn't outspeed my Keldeo, and it's not really a huge threat to anything else. So, I'm going to knock out the Gliscor as he's now going to bring in his Greninja. I expect a U-turn from this thing, obviously, as I'm going to go out into my Scizor as he does go for the U-turn. So, at this point, I'm thinking maybe it's Scarfed. It could be Scarfed. Uh, I don't know its full set, but he goes into his Polyrath. makes a lot of sense. Now that this thing actually came out against my Scizor, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this, okay, yeah, yeah, it's a good bring. Uh, as I'm just going to go for the U-turn here, I'm, I'm going to go into Jolteon because I don't value health on my Jolteon too heavily as uh, the Gliscor is now gone, so I don't need to HP ice that thing. His guard's already, like, taken quite a bit of damage, so, like, Volt Switch and, and Thunderbolt are going to do good, good amounts once he Mega Evolves, uh, so the HP on, on Jolteon doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to get it in on, as he goes for an HP Fire, uh, I get my Toxic Orb activated, as now he goes into his Decidueye and I'm going to go for a Volt Switch, so I get off a little bit of damage on this Decidueye, it does 19% 
100%. I'm now gonna bring back in Hoopa because, you know, Hyperspace Fury looking kind of free, except for the Polyrath. The Polyrath's a really good switch in, and you're gonna see right here that it's fully Fizz Def, and it actually takes this Hyperspace Fury way too well. Uh, 23%. So, obviously, I could have gone for Zen Headbutt there, but I figured let's not play games this early. The Polyrath's not that huge of a threat against my team. I do have options to switch into it. So I'm going to go into Golbat here, and this is the opportunity I'm actually going to take to uh, to try to get uh, a Roost off with my Golbat as he maybe goes for a Scald or something, but he goes for a Circle Throw, and that's going to leave my Golbat at 34%, and it still has to come in on Rock. So that's kind of scary, uh, but he's going to get me back into Hoopa, and now it's going to be a Zen Headbutt. But obviously, uh, he has the Greninja, so I'm thinking, okay, what's the one way that I could deal with the Polyrath and simultaneously catch the Greninja if that's what comes in because he's definitely not going into Venusaur, right? Because Zen Headbutt. Um, so I go for Energy Ball and he actually goes into Venusaur. So I don't know if that was a power prediction, if he had seen Energy Ball in his mocks or what it was, but uh, he caught he caught my Energy Ball perfectly with Venusaur, so good on him. He didn't have to catch his end headbutt, so now I'm going to go into Lando, as he's going to go for a Leech Seed, I believe, he does, and uh, this is going to put me into Agwav with the Toxic, so I'm going to get back up to uh, 72%, and uh, now I'm going to go for a knockoff and get rid of uh, Venusaur's Black Sludge, which is going to help a little bit with the rolls from Hoopa, because Max Defense Venusaur only takes like a max of 76 or 78 from uh, Zen Headbutt from Hoopa. He's going to play it smart, he's just going to get all his health back through the use of uh, Synthesis. And now I'm going to go into Golbat, and what I know about this Venusaur is that it has Leech Seed, Giga Drain, and Synthesis. If its last move is Sludge Bomb, it cannot knock me out. Uh, if its last move is Hidden Power Fire, it cannot knock me out. And, by normal standards, my Golbat should actually be faster than his Venusaur, but I EV'd my Golbat to be slower than his Decidueye. And the reason that I did that was to make sure that I got slow U-turns off on his Decidueye at all times, as opposed to fast, so that I could get in my Hoopa as often as possible. So right here, I'm going to go for the Roost. He goes for the Leech Seed. He's faster than me. And uh, I'm going to get back up to 47. And I'm going to U-turn again here as he goes into Gardevoir. And once again, I, I guess he predicted me to Roost again, and that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a U-turn off, and I'm going to get in my Hoopa. And now, uh, I know that he doesn't want to risk his Greninja, because it seems to be a very good offensive threat against the rest of my Mons, especially if it's HP Fire Extra Sensory. It does do a lot of work here. So I figure, okay, I'm just going to go for the Zen Headbutt. If he goes into Venusaur again, I'm going to get off a ton of damage on it. And then we can play games with what's coming in after if he actually wants to risk his Greninja on the following turn. Uh, or if I can predict it. So I'm going to go for the Zen Headbutt. Now, if Zen Headbutt doesn't connect, uh, I'm not knocking out the card, obviously. And it's, it's destroying my Hoopa. So uh, that would be pretty bad. But uh, it is in range uh, of Zen Headbutt. It should be in range. It's probably not max HP. So I go for Zen, and we do actually get the connection, and we knock out the guard. So kill number two for Hoopa. Fantastic. Now he's going to bring in the frog. Uh, the, the good old Greninja, and I'm gonna go into Mega Sizz as he goes for uh, an extra sensory, predicting, I guess, my Keldeo or my Golbat to come in there. I go into my Scizor, and I want to see if this thing is choice in any way, so I go for the, uh, the U-turn, but he actually ends up going for Hidden Power Fire and knocking me out. So Scizor didn't do anything this game, uh, other than pivot in a couple of times, I guess, but... Uh, that's that's really all it did it, but it did reveal to me that his Greninja is not choice scarfed And that's very important because that means that Hoopa outspeeds it So we'll go into Jolteon here, and we're gonna go for the Volt Switch uh, It's looking kind of free and uh, I'm able to get into a different Mon here as uh, Now he's sitting at 72 and because of the fact that he lost his uh, Black Sludge he's not out of range of Zen Headbutt otherwise he would have been here but I'm able to go for a Zen Headbutt and possibly get a roll here, as I do, and I knock out the Venusaur. So now Greninja comes back in. Um, this is an interesting turn, because I know that he's going to go for Extra Sensory. If you look at my team, my Hoopa's Scarfed, I can't stay in against the, the Greninja. And the rest of my team is hit either super effectively or quite hard by Extra Sensory, so it's very obvious. So I evaluate what I need the least, and it's looking like Keldeo. Keldeo doesn't do much against the rest of his team. I can't set up on Polyrath because of Circle Throw. The Greninja has Extra Sensory, and if the uh, Decidueye happens to be Scarfed, or even if it's just a basic set, it can just Leaf Blade through me. So I'm going to go into Keldeo as he goes for an Extra Sensory here. And uh, on this turn, I'm going to go for a Scald as opposed to a Secret Sword, because if he wants to go into Decidueye to uh, to catch the, the Secret Sword, even though he knows I'm Leftovers and he's probably faster, I say probably because he's actually not. Um, he outsped Modest Keldeo, and I'm timid, and I have enough speed for Guard. So uh, if he does want to, uh, to switch out into Decidueye for whatever reason, so that he's not in with his Greninja, 
uh, when my Jolteon comes in and gets off a free Volt Switch uh, into Hoopa and goes for Hyperspace Fury, then he's gonna go into Decidueye now. And what I need to do is get off damage on Decidueye because I explained this in the Team Builder. That last move on Hoopa, that Energy Ball, is looking really scary right now for him because he has th two months uh, weak to it. He doesn't have a Scarfer as far as I've seen, and he uh, he only has uh, Decidueye as a resist, which is at 69 before rocks right now, so it comes in at 57. So I'm gonna go for a Scald. He ends up switching into his Decidueye. I get off the Scald damage, and it does like 24, 23, no 21. And uh, now I'm like, okay, well if the Decidueye is Scarfed. If it locks itself into a grass move, I get in my uh, Golbat and I heal. If it locks itself into anything else, one, it might not kill me, and two, I just bring out Hoopa after anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go for another Scald as he is Scarfed. He goes for the Shadow Ball, knocks me down to 6%, I get off another Scald, and now what this means is this 10% Decidueye is in range of Energy Ball. So I'm gonna go for another Scald, he's gonna knock me out with the Shadow Ball, no problem whatsoever. And we're gonna go for the Energy Ball, knock out the, uh, the Decidueye, and now... Problem is, <clears throat> a couple of things. He has a Polyrath, uh, which is currently at 69%. Once it falls to, uh, 64-ish, uh, 63, after Rock's damage, uh, it's not necessarily in range of Energy Ball, however, I have a Jolteon, which is at 62% before rocks, meaning, meaning it comes in at 50. I don't know Greninja's last move. If it's Water Shuriken, I could still lose this game. Because all he has to do is get enough hits on either Hoopa or Jolteon, or both, and he wins. But he goes into Polyrath first. And this tells me that he probably doesn't have Water Shuriken, but this Energy Ball is still a roll, and you never know. So I'm gonna go for the ball, and we knock out the Polyrath. And Eric says GG in the chat. Uh, and I, at that point, I figured out, well, he probably doesn't have Water Shuriken, uh, otherwise he'd be banking on crits and stuff uh, at this point, because I think it would take three hits on uh, on Hoopa from a, uh, like, a non-specs, essentially, uh, uh, Greninja to knock me out with, with Water Shuriken, and on, on Jolteon, I believe it's five, or four and a crit. So I'm going to go for the Energy Ball, and we knock out the Greninja. So we beat the Toad team, 3-0, and if you guys noticed, Hoopa got every single kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hoopa killed every Mon, so it's up to six kills after only three weeks, uh, and we've only brought it twice. So, quite impressive. I am enjoying this Mon. It's a massive threat, and uh, when you can play it like this and get it in that often, I think that, uh, that that's where it shines, and I really want to show off how good this thing is this season. So, that's the game for you. Now, we're going to jump back over to the team builder, and uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly what transactions I made. So, um... Actually, I'm just going to tell you what I got. So, uh, as you can see, our team on the right side. What we did was we dropped Rhyperior, uh, Gardevoir, Go-Goat, and Golbat. We traded Golurk last week for, uh, for Moltres. So, Moltres is on our team. Uh, effective week four. Uh, and the other four that I mentioned, Rhyperior, Gardevoir, Go-Goat, and, and Golbat, got swapped out. We ended up getting Whimsicott, uh, Kecleon, and Metagross. So what this means is that now I replaced one rocker by another. I have a second steel type. I have more priority bullet punch as well on my team. Uh, and I really like Metagross as a mon in general. It's also a very scary offensive threat. Uh, as for Whimsicott, it's another defogger. So that's going to help out Moltres a little bit. It's a priority mon. It also gets infiltrator. So that helps with losing, um, with losing Cro uh, Golbat's infiltrator. Uh, gets U-turn, so more momentum. Uh, to complement the uh, the Moltres that we got. And uh, it also gets, uh, obviously, things like Leech Seed, Cotton Guard, stuff like that. So I really like that. And finally, Kecleon is our uh, third rocker uh, on the team. So we, we kept three rockers. Luckily, we were able to do that. Kecleon is a fat normal. Uh, can change its typing on whim. Uh, it can be a very scary offensive threat as well. Uh, because it does have a decent attack of 90 and it gets Protean, right? So it's changing its typing. Uh, constantly uh, can block spin through the use of shadow sneak as well So that's gonna help out with our uh, with our T spikes and our rocks uh, Gonna be able to to really uh, increase damage on opposing teams and uh, I just like Kecleon in general And I want to try it out so I felt that uh, that Moltres was a better fit to the team I needed like a, another really good um, ground immunity fire resist uh, I'm on that with with good flying stab 
because um, Lando's not always going to want to run Z-Fly, but Moltres is, is a really good Z-Fly user. And I think having Fire Stab as well on this team is going to help it out a lot because uh, Keldeo, Zealus, Lando, uh, Jolteon, they struggle with grass types. And I think that Moltres is like the ultimate grass killer. So uh, I think that, uh, that the team is a lot more well-rounded well now. We still have a fairy. We still have like all of the typings that we had before. We have a grass type. Um, and we, we were able to sort of alleviate some of the, uh, the ice weakness that we had because having Metagross as a, as a, uh, secondary steel is going to help that. Having, uh, Moltres that isn't weak to ice, obviously it's neutral, but it's a very good spadef tank, uh, is going to help that as well. And Kecleon is another spadef tank, like it can run AV and it can turn itself into a, like a fighting type or a fire type and really, uh, deal with ices or ice types that way. So that's, uh, that's the transactions we made. So you guys are going to see, um, if we're going to use any of those in next week's game. Uh, and once they come out, you'll see, um, what the nicknames are, obviously, whichever ones end up on, on the teams from here till the end of the season, you'll see the nicknames, or I guess I could reveal them now. So, uh, Moltres is Arcade Fire, uh, Whimsicott is Aha, um, Metagross is DMX, uh, for X going to give it to you, and, uh, Kecleon is Boy George for Karma Chameleon. So, that's the uh, that's the full team now, as of now. So the, that's going to change on this layout as well within the coming weeks, and uh, it's also uh, I, I feel it's a lot better of a team. So let me know what you guys thought of the uh, the transactions as well as the game. Obviously, if you like the way that we played Hoopa with the six kills, then uh, let us know in the uh, the comments. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this battle, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. If this is your first time on the channel, and I will see you guys next week. Ciao.